change on these issues, uh, and particularly to address the complacency and lack of movement in government uh, officials. So what, what are some actions that we could take? We heard about uh, writing the governor, perhaps that's one, one action in one arena. What do you all uh, recommend? Um, I first encourage people to think critically about the government and to remember that a system is designed to for a specific result. So if it's not, if you're, if you're getting a certain result, you need to change the system in order to change the result. So um, you can start, for me, it's the most um, satisfying to start locally. And we've had good successes working um, grassroots in our community with our city council people to address issues um, that we want to change. Um, so, but I would, I would just say, if possible to stop looking at the government as like this um, entity that cannot be challenged and that is, uh, stop looking at it as an entity that is fixed. And then just acknowledge that it was designed to get the result that it's giving us right now. I think if more people could um, be aware of that and, and move in our country with that knowledge, they would then act differently. Any more ideas? Um, I, I think from my experiences, and, and I totally, I, I agree with you, Martine. Um, I think in my experience, a lot of what happens at the local level will eventually get adopted statewide and on the national level. And we see that with like tobacco cessation ordinances and whatnot. And so um, you, I always tell people, don't underestimate the power of the people on the local level. Um, and I think um, just just very vividly in my mind, some something that has happened that's very real in my world right now is this idea that in order, um, you know, we we started the Hmong Public Health um, Association. Uh, you know, it's made up of Hmong public health folks. And one of the first questions I asked my group was, um, "Do you know how a bill becomes law?" Right, and. These are all my peers who have MPHs and PhDs, and no one knew how a bill becomes law. Uh, and so, as as you know, a, a policy health policy person, um, you know, it, it was really important for me to get us the resources so that we could work together and and make some meaningful contributions to policy. And that meant that as a um, a group that as a group we're connecting with local organizations, national organizations like the Southeast Asian Resource Action Center, um, and really using our relationships across our own cultural community to move an agenda. Um, and you know, and that may mean we're joining hands with other like cross racial groups, um, you know, other organizations with shared interests or whatnot, but. I think the foundational piece of it is really building relationships. And I think Martine talked about building relationships with, you know, her city council members uh, and the, you know, relationship building is crucial to moving agendas forward. And that oftentimes means you're, you're building relationships with people outside of your comfort zone, outside of your usual circle. Like you're never going to understand what, what someone else's perspective is until you get to know them. And so during this time of COVID where everything is, you know, virtual uh, and you can fit in maybe like 10 virtual coffee calls a day, you, you, you might want to do that <laughs> or not. <laughs> yeah. I also think, you know, like we can support candidates of color. Um, after, you know, the Me Too movement, we saw women come out in droves and run for public office. And, um, you know, I can't tell you... Um, we did a presentation, our youth theater group did a presentation. I think it was for Illusion Theater, their annual 
breakfast um, fundraising. And um, the Lieutenant Governor was there, you know, who, as you know, is no Ojibwe woman. And um, when she saw the kids perform, you know, she said, one of these young women may one day be the governor. And, you know, just to, for our kids to hear that, you know, like to see, um, you know, to be in the same room with the co Lieutenant Governor and to know like, you can do that. And I think, um, you know, with, um, um, you know, I didn't know I was one of the early backers of uh, Kamala <laughs> and I still have her, you know, uh, and now she's a vice president. And so, you know, to encourage um, and support um, people of color to run for both city, county, local, and um, uh, and uh, and federal um, uh, policy making positions. I think that's crucial. We have the only way we're going to change these policies, racist policies in the country, is to um, acknowledge and um, uh, you know what's happened in the past, and then you know, put people in place who can change them. Thanks. Thank you. Um, there, there were a couple of questions that are actually ask, asking how, how folks can across the state collaborate or maybe become more engaged with some of the communities, you know, cross-culturally. Um, and I think that the fact that you all are here uh, provides a resource in terms of how do we learn from each other and how do we share ideas and resources. And, and I, I assume that you all are open to being contacted by individuals. But the question was too about how, who can, who could create this sort of network uh, if somebody needed uh, to, to learn about the Ojibwe, uh, you know, in Southern Minnesota, how would they go about that? Um, so, uh, so that was one comment in trying to figure out how, how to how to get there and how, is there an avenue? Oh. Go make a friend. Yeah. <laughs> go oh. make a friend, you know, volunteer at one of our organizations. Uh, you know, go help Martine with her gardens and in, uh, in, in the in North Minneapolis or um, you know, there's so many um, uh, you know, Asian organizations um, that, you know, uh, go serve on somebody's board, you know, like make a friend. So uh, that's how you learn, right? And you can support us at the same time. Um, just, uh, yeah, I think that's a, that's a great opportunity. Great. And there are some of the other questions are sort of versions of some of the things we've talked about. There was one philosophical question that I've always pondered over um, and, I, I, and I don't get it why we do these things. So the question was, how do we move past prioritizing economy first and people second? Why are we so concerned with maintaining the short-term costs and benefits to the economy rather than prioritizing people and investing in our future? And one of my pet peeves around this issue is how much money we're investing in trying to go to Mars when all those funds uh, could be used and all that knowledge and all that uh, brain power could be used to, to preserve the earth, the mother earth and, uh, and our populations, but, but we don't do that. And I know that we probably have a spirit of, of learning and, and, and exploring, but there's so still so much to learn here and, uh, we haven't done a great job of maintaining uh, Mother Earth here. And so going to Mars and doing the same thing is, is insane. But anyway, that was a question is how do we move from prioritizing economy or, or great events or adventures uh, and, to, and, to, and look at people in our communities? I have a few thoughts on that. I think that a lot of the, at the in the roots, of this system, there's a lot of greed. And I don't think that we need to be true to those roots. It, um, if you think about, you know, slavery, Jim Crow, you know, stealing land, all of these stealing labor, that's all rooted in greed. And uh, I like to think that when you take good care of people, 
that's economically sound. And people living healthy, happy um, lives where they don't feel like they are um, being attacked and they feel stable, which you yield is a community that's healthy. Maybe the community, uh, maybe everyone doesn't, I don't know, have two cars, but everyone rides a bike and they're happy together. Like we have to reshape how we think about um, what a healthy, stable community is. And we can't, I mean, each of our, each of us, like if, if everyone here is um, a manager somewhere or leading an organization, you can make choices that prioritize the people around you and their well being over the bottom line. Because we actually, in America, have so, there's, there's so much waste and there's so much resources. So we can actually be, shift ourselves and uh, take better care of those around us. Any more comments, sir? Nope. I'll just say, you know, like what Martine said, we already grow enough food um, in this country to feed everybody in the world. We have enough space, land that if every, you know, we could house um, all of the world, these kind of stacked high, but, you know, within the United States, there's so much land that, um, you know, in, in Minnesota, for instance, you know, two and a half million people live in the Twin Cities and, you know, the other million and a half are spread out over, you know, vast areas of land. And uh, so this idea that there's not enough is just not true. When we, you know, in, in my culture, when we plant a garden, the first seeds that we plant are for the elders. The second seeds are for the children and then for our family. And so that's very different, right? Then I'm going to plant this and it's all for me. Um, so just that concept of, um, you know, another thing that, you know, I grew up, always grew up learning was when you get something, give something away. And, um, and, and when we celebrate birthdays and weddings and, you know, it's not the bride and groom who get the gifts. They are the givers of the gifts. Yeah. You know, when it's my birthday, I give gifts to people. And that's a very different um, economy, right? right. Um, and you know what, we survived here in, in the Americas um, for uh, uh, tens of thousands of years prior to capitalism being brought here. Um, but it's, it's, it, you know, it's, um, it's very pervasive and uh, we have to shift our values into uh, or act on the values that we actually say, you know, for life and liberty and justice for all. Like that has to be more than words. You know, we have to begin to figure out how to live those values if um, democracy as it is, is going to survive. Thank you, Sharon. So uh, I just before I hand it over to, to Kathy, I wanted to, to uh, point out a fact that, uh, Sharon, you, you talked about land. So National Geographic um, did a graphic uh, uh, on the number of people in the world. And it turns out that seven, there's 7 billion, about 7 billion people in the world. You could put all 7 billion people, shoulder to shoulder, back to back, all 7 billion in the county of Los Angeles. So that means that there is, like you're saying, there is a lot of land. So land is not an issue. And certainly thinking about how would you use that land is a big question and how should we be using it? So we're just at the end of our time. So Kathy, I think that you are, will be doing a closeout, is yep. that correct? Yep. I, and in closing, I wanna thank everyone while Mary brings us up. Thank you everyone who made this forum possible. Um, our panel of speakers in particular, Sharon Day, Martine Smaller, and Xiao Yang. Our moderator, Hymeen Martinez, the forum planning committee and all those who contributed time and support to bring this to you and all of everybody who attended today. If you are not a member of MPHA already, we invite you to join us in becoming a member, 
check out our website at www.mpha.net. We'd love to have you join. We have some great events coming up. First of all, our annual conference, which will be virtual again this year. Um, the title, Bold and Humble, Engaging in Anti-Racist Public Health, and it will be held April 29th and 30th. You can see our website for more details. Um, there, you got that. Um, on March 17th at 3.30, spend your St. Patrick's Day with past president of MPHA and former commissioner of um, Minnesota Department of Health, Ed, Dr. Ed Ellinger, who will be presenting public health perspectives on plagues and pandemics. You may want to sign up for this on our website as well. And then finally, join us for the final MPHA policy forum on May 7th, when we will explore environmental health, is there justice for all in the public health, in our public health response? And we will ponder what we can do to do better. So register for this final one at mpha.net. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us today and enjoy the beautiful weather that we're supposed to have this weekend. And let's, bye bye. Let's keep connected. Yep. Thank Thanks. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.